Now, uh, I think one of the most uh, startling stories about Mr. Guess, and I'll get this in, I don't know whether we'll put this in the oral history or not, I'm on the mm -hmm. thing, but I don't know why we're going to spend all this time on what's my line. Certainly not. Well, it's interesting. But uh, there was one time we did this show out of New York. The only time in the 17 years we did one show in Chicago for a couple of very good reasons. The Democratic National Convention was there, and John Daly was doing it for ABC, so he had to be there. And uh, Dorothy was doing her story. She was a top reporter as well as a columnist. So she had to be in Chicago. And one of our co-sponsors that year with Kellogg's, uh, with, no, that year with Kellogg when it was Remington, Remington Rand and Hazel Bishop, a uh, cosmetic right. house in Chicago. So the Hazel Bishop people said if we would do the show from Chicago, they'd pay all the special costs. It cost about $20,000 just to move that show to Chicago. One time all the new kind of wires that had to be set up and stuff. And then they gave a great big party after the uh, after yeah. the show, so it was big stuff. We all had a ball. But the mystery guest that night in Chicago was Pearl Mester. And when the show was over, uh, I very annoyedly went up to John Daly and said, uh, what the hell was the idea of having Pearl Mester as a mystery guest that we only had her about four or five months ago? Why is she <coughs> such a big shot that we have to have her twice in six months? And John said, you don't know how happy we were to get Pearl Master. He said, you will believe what happened today. He said, we had his mystery guest tonight. And he said, what a coup this would have been for Watch My Line, a television panel show. The ex-president of the United States, Harry S. Truman, was going to be the mystery guest. He said, at 4 o'clock this afternoon, some idiot at CBS said, we better clear this with the president of our co-sponsor, Remington Rand. The president of Ramian Rand was a fellow named General Douglas MacArthur. Uh -huh, uh -huh, so they uh -huh. called up General MacArthur and said, uh, be sure to listen to what's my line tonight, because uh, Harry Truman's going to be the mystery guest. Well, the wire practically burned up. The General MacArthur started screaming and said, uh, that blankety, blankety, blank isn't going to be on any program I have anything to do with. And uh, I refused to have him on the show. Now, instead of telling him to go to hell, which was what they should have done, they went to a panic and told President Truman he couldn't be on What's My Mind. Can you imagine that? The pettiness of this. Well, anyway, here they were stuck in Chicago at 5 o'clock with no mystery guest. So we were in a, in a, uh, trying looking for somebody. Pearl Mester was there, and, and she was happy to do it, she being a ham too. So that's how we got her for the second time within a year as a mystery guest. But. Uh, well, I'll show you the what a authority side this that a, was on a, 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 a sponsor, sponsor has. Also, what a petty man General mm -hmm. MacArthur was. Oh, mm -hmm. when Truman heard this story, he roared with laughter. He said, I always told you about that fellow MacArthur. He said, that, just, I'll show you what kind of what I had to deal with when I was fighting with him during the, In the Korean, Korean War. War. It's an interesting side mm -hmm. like Very interesting. Yeah. Very. You, too. Oh, huh? great in every way. Great in every way. Never enjoyed any more in my life. Uh, I was I found out by accident. So this is the way big shows get canceled on the air. Uh, Phyllis and I were on our way to uh, Barbados last year in February, and uh, we were out at the airport. And I was paged at uh, at Pan Am and the you know waiting in the lounge for to get on the plane. And it was a fellow from the New York Times, and he said, uh, "Have you any statement to make about uh, the cancellation of What's My Line?" And uh, I said, what the hell are you talking about? I'm not hearing anybody cancellation. He said, oh, you're not going to be on next year. So I said, uh, well, I have to check that. I said, we, we had about a half hour. We were there very early. I said, I'll call you back. So I immediately called Mark Goodson and uh, in his office in New York. And I said, I'm out at the airport here. What's this about what's my line being canceled after the, at the end of the season? Mark Goodson said, I haven't heard a word about it. I said, well, the New York Times tells me it's been canceled. He said, Jesus, I'll call you right back. He called back about 10 minutes later. He said, yeah, they've decided all the game shows are going out. He said, we're going off. On this was in February. He said, we'll run through Labor Day. And it ends in Labor Day the fall, mm -hmm. for the fall, new fall program. They're going to throw out all the games. They've decided that they're not mm -hmm. prime time shows anymore. They'll have some of them in the daytime. We probably could have done it as a daytime show, which none of us would dream of doing. So we all have businesses of our own. And, uh, but he said, uh, it's out. So the Times had the story before any of us had been told, including the people, Goodson Todman, the producers, and the people who have been on the show for 17 years. Who made the decision, really? Uh, I won't say. We know. It was one of the big shots at CBS. 
who decided that maybe rightly that mm -hmm. these shows had had it after 17 years it was time for a change uh, but uh, there's a hell of a way of telling us they claimed that it slipped out they, they didn't meant to make the announcement they were, they were going to tell us you know but the t somebody at the times found out about it that all these shows are going off that included Password and several other I've got a secret all went off at the same time that's how we found out it was true well, then, of course, I thought it was interesting when you told me they gave you this plaque. Oh, they gave yes, us all great big beautiful silver cigarette boxes and great warm speeches. We have no kick coming. For God's sake, we run for 17 and a half years. Right. But uh, maybe I'm wrong, but I think that that show had life left in it. Anyway, the last night, Labor Day, was a sad night. They showed some clips of uh, the early show. My, how we had changed in those seven <laughs> <laughs> uh, Was there a party afterwards? Yes. It was more or less awake. <laughs> <laughs> we were all very sad. Everybody loved that show. We loved each other. It had become uh -huh. a great family. The producers, the directors, we were all good friends. We was, every, every Sunday night for 17 years uh -huh. we were together. It was a way of life. It was a live show, 52 weeks a year. Mm -hmm. Now, the last few years, we had talked them into letting us uh, take six yeah. summer shows. So we put them, we start doing them early in the spring, space them out. Every two weeks we do two shows. So we get off for six weeks in the summer. I took a winter vacation anyhow. I'd be out for four or five weeks in February or March or something. I'd go off and substitutes would come on. That made the vacations doubly expensive because not only were the vacations, but every week I wasn't on that show, I was losing quite a lot of money and losing all my hamming too. I missed it terribly. In like fact, very often we'd come back on a Saturday instead of at the end of the weekend, so I could get in that Sunday night. Did you? Do you think that this? Uh, some people who become TV personalities find that it uh, disturbs their life or for their children. Did you ever run across anything of that sort? Oh no! After all, I wasn't an actor. Yeah. No. Well, you were to a certain oh, extent. Oh, I didn't though. put on makeup and mm -hmm. sing songs or clown or play somebody else. I was myself on this show. And uh, I loved it. And uh, no, I liked every part of it. The fame that came with it, I loved. <laughs> I, I make no bones about it. Everybody still knows me. Mm -hmm. uh, when you go, when I go to theater or something, it's, I still uh, I'm recognized, and I hear people saying that's bad. Oh yeah, well, that's true. I night we saw you, three well, more people behind walking always. against. Oh, okay, that's how I found out where you were. Always, because. always, always. You get used to it, and you like it. Now, of course, when you're out with a much bigger celebrity, you immediately fade into the background. Well, for the last two nights, we've been with Frank Sinatra. I assure you, nobody came up with me my autograph. They were all crowding around Frank Sinatra. Well, that's the way life that's goes. That's the way it goes. 